starting out talking about this song, a lot of people in the comments, which I never really replied back to anybody, um, they were like, you know, I like the song, but the beginning sounds like White Lightning. Of course, it's because it was White Lightning. Making the music video and the song White Lightning was a very specific turning point in my career. Um, and if you notice the poem that I wrote in the beginning, it kind of goes along with, or if not perfectly goes along with, uh, the mud to gold, which was another significant point in my life uh, where my career changed a lot. So in the beginning of White Lightning, <clears throat> if you listen to the poem, it says, Some people go for gold, then lose sight of the shine. And the sparkle that once was gets tarnished in mine. They forget what they was after they fall off the track. And their vision that was vivid gets lost in pitch black. Age starts to take place like a bomb that keeps ticking. And they regret not chasing after after they had the ambition. The ambition fades away like a red on a rose. And the regret sucks the light from everybody, I suppose. But my rose ain't red. It won't die, but ain't fake. But when I die, I'll drown myself in these lyrics I speak. So we added that to the beginning because it was significant. White. Just like this song is significant. And then when the song starts, the beat changes. And then it says, like The reason I wrote that is because I've come to a point of self-realization in my career. There have been plenty of times where I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I better keep working, I better keep working. And you should always keep working. You know, you should always keep putting out good stuff. You should always keep grinding. But I truly do believe that I'm at a point in my career, based off looking at other careers and studying other careers, that I know people are always like, oh, well, well, country rap ain't popular, so it doesn't really matter. Well, neither was any other genre of music when it started. Neither was rock and roll. Neither was country. Neither was rap. Neither was punk rock. At, at the beginning of every genre of music, people were always saying, oh, it's never going to work. This ain't going to be nothing. That's, what they, that's just what they say in the beginning. But when you look at each of these genres of music, what t-shirts last the longest? What music lasts the longest? It's always a select few of the first initial people in that specific lane of music that stuck out. And this is not me being egotistical, this is not me being braggadocious, it's just facts and it's, it's, and I even, it took me a long time to even admit this, but I'm one of those people for this lane of music. This lane of music since I started has blown up. So with my first album being Cheatham County to now, I have in a sense turned mud into gold. And I truly do believe because of me going to extreme lengths to go through these trenches, which we'll get to in the verse, but I've been through it all and I've seen it all and I've kept trucking no matter what and putting out stuff and not not only just stuff because you can't just throw shit out there and expect people to just accept it you have to actually work and get better and have better quality and do all these things and keep touring and keep getting bigger and that's what I've done I'm at a point now where I'm selling out arenas in seven hours on a <laughs> on a Wednesday and anybody out there there's haters you can say whatever you want, but I'm to the point now where it, it doesn't matter what you say. Literally nothing matters. You could tell me I suck. You could tell me I ain't shit. You can tell me I'm never going to make it. I don't suck. My stuff ain't shit. And I hate to break it to you, but I already made it. Everything after this is gold. I just carried the mud with me. So in this verse, it starts out, it says, Dripping in this swamp water with the snakes, I'm not bothered. I done been backstabbed in the front, back, and in the head, but it's good, pot. Because it is good. I mean, 
you have to have stories. And to have stories, you got to make a mark or have marks been made on you, which is backstabbing, which is, um, you know, meeting these people as a young artist. You meet all these motherfuckers who want to tell you anything to grab a hold of what you're doing. And when you're, when you are broke and you don't got shit and it is hard to pay your bills and have gas money and keep doing your music career until it comes off. It's very easy to listen to one of these motherfuckers and have them cut you a check to own half of your shit because at that point in time, half of your shit ain't shit. So that check they're trying to cut you does look like a lot of money and does look like a good idea. Well, I, I knew from the jump it wasn't a good idea. I knew what I come in this lane of music for. I knew what I wanted to be remembered as. And you can't get there by being wooed or persuaded by these people to take your stuff. I would rather have not shit and own what I'm saying and be able to live what I'm saying and it be 100% true and not have to prove it to nobody because they can see it out in the open than to be rich and famous off of somebody else's words, somebody else's life. Somebody else is everything. So when you go through all this stuff, yeah, you do get stabbed in the back and in the front and in the head, but you got to pull the knives out and you got to keep going while you're bleeding, while you're struggling, because that's what motherfuckers is going to talk about when you're dead. They're not going to talk about the motherfucker that gets handed songs every day and uh, gets pampered and ain't doing shit. And people ain't fucking remembered. There's a good jabillion of them. There's only one of motherfuckers like me. And I, I'm comfortable saying that. And I ain't no beginner. Ain't nobody's paid for dinner. I ain't perfect, I'm a sinner. Underground, so warm to death. Pretty much saying, oh, well, I'm underground. You wanna, you wanna tell me I'm underground? Well, uh, my fucking Spotify spins don't say so. You're saying I'm underground because what? Because I'm not on the fucking radio that has a million fucking commercials about diamonds and cars and fucking shit like that. You hear the same song over and over. It's more legendary to get big with none of these big outlets helping you than the other way. And I like the way I've done it. So yeah, so if I'm underground, warn the devil, motherfucker, because I'm gonna cut his fucking head off. And the devil is the music industry. Better protect your neck. All I am is a hellion raising hell rocking medallions and on these models cars that are holding some hellacious engines. Hell no, this ain't no pretending. My vengeance comes with no mentions. I'm sicker than dirty COVID syringes stuck in you bitches. Because I'm exactly what the fuck I say I am. These other motherfuckers want to sing and rap about fucking tractors and, and four wheelers and hire people to be in their videos to ride a four-wheeler because they can't ride a fucking four-wheeler. It's just like, bro, if you can't do it, bro, if you can't hack it, then fucking don't hack it. Don't say you can hack it because there's a motherfucker like me somewhere that's going to call you on your bullshit. And I'm just rapping about what the fuck I know, and that's why I'm so successful. And there's a lot of other people out there just like me that live the same life I live that that are just like me and they like seeing somebody just like them and when you're out here and you're rapping about what in the fuck we're doing it's just like gangster rap if you're rapping about selling drugs and being a hard ass motherfucker and saying you're going you can shoot somebody well when another hood ass rapper comes up on you and fucking calls you out well you better be able to back that shit up Otherwise, you're a pussy to all the real gangster motherfuckers, right? Same in the country. I really do got a fucking Mustang, a, a, a fucking chain that's a 90 models Mustang symbol. I really do got a chain that's a, a fucking Chevrolet emblem. I really do got a chain that says Creek Squad. I really do be out here driving muscle cars like a crazy motherfucker, riding Harleys like a fucking idiot, and riding wheelies down the street on the streets I'm not supposed to. But that's who I am. That's who, that's what's fun to me. Just because the next fucking rapper thinks it's cool to talk about it, don't mean that next rapper does it. 
Go look at their Instagram. Half the time they're in a fucking room playing with their belly button, eating ho ho cakes, talking some shit that they don't even know about. Yeah, you think I'm the cure? And then you all die. And then you all die. I'ma sleep in my bed. Still blinking one eye. Still thinking of lines to casting the pines for ones like me who live the same life. Just country motherfuckers in a town with a time way behind, but we still make it shine as light. These motherfuckers think I am the fucking cure. Listen, man. The people that watch the internet, or the people who are my fans, I'm not gonna say no names, okay? Because half these motherfuckers don't deserve to even have their names spoken on my shit. And I know that's some big balls on the table shit, but that's just the truth, okay? I, they're in my DMs every day asking me, hey man, uh, I, I know, I know I've, I've been a, a jerk to you, but uh, uh, first off, you haven't been a jerk to me. You've just been a big fat pussy in my fucking DMs, okay? Your words don't mean shit, especially around here, bro. If you got a fucking problem, you go knock on that cracker's door. You go say something to that motherfucker at the gas station. All this fucking internet bullshit, I'm gonna show up and beat you up. Do you know how many times I've sent a fucking address to the local gym that I go to for these assholes and they don't show up? What are you, broke motherfucker? You got all this money doing all these shows? You ain't got $60 to put in your gas tank to drive here to prove you're about what you say you're about? It's because you're not about it, dude. And that's the thing. These motherfuckers think I'm the cure. They come to me, can I get a song? Can I get a feature? It ain't gonna fucking matter to the ones that are doing this. Because when you rap about this kind of shit that we do, me and everybody watching this, we don't believe you because we know you're fucking lying. I'm not the cure. So when, when I know I'm not the cure and I don't help you, they die off. And that's facts. You can go back and check. You can fact check what the hell I'm saying. Everybody, and it's been, it's been misfortunate, of course, you know, I, I haven't made the best choices, but I've made pretty fucking good ones. And these people try to be, befriend me and, and hang out with me and Either uh, if they're a guy, they, they, they try to be my buddy and get a song and do all this bullshit. It don't work. I can't help you with that. I'm not your cure. If you can't carry yourself, you're gonna die. If you're a female artist and you date me and we do a song and the motherfucker blows up and then you jump ship because of some weird shit and the whole thing ended up being this ploy for you to get more fans, that's not gonna work either. It just ain't gonna work, man. Because I'm just in a weird position to where people know I ain't faking it. And people know that I'm I'm the fucking real deal. Because I show that I'm the real deal. In my daily life, in my public life, in every fucking way. And these other people can't do the same. So when you fuck me over, they don't fuck with you no more. They don't even think about you. You're a fucking thought that somebody forgot. Don't understand these label owners don't fucking get it. If I sign the slavery, I'll be shuffled up and dust collected for fucking ages. Simply because that's true, man. That's true. These motherfuckers don't. They just gonna attach to as many young motherfuckers as they can and make them not wealthy millionaires off themselves so they can stay wealthy millionaires from not off their self. Ain't that some fucking shit? That's just how it goes. That's what that line's about. You can't see no vision. Your mind is not connected. You've been blinded by Ferraris, parties, and co base ass records. Everything is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is. Hit up, hit up. They all follow the same blueprint, dude. We've been, we've been thinking we're getting these new country artists for the past 15 years. It's not new country artists. It's, it's a new face. It's a new outfit. It's a new size of guy or size of girl. It's a new hair color. But it's all the same blueprint. Now, I will say this. <clears throat> the mainstream in Nashville did try, tried out. They tried out, they wanted, a, they wanted an outlaw type person when they got Luke Combs. I, I like Luke Combs' music, but my friends are the ones who write a lot of this shit. Uh, but I don't like Luke Combs, and I don't like the people who run his shit because that's what they wanted when they first signed Luke Combs. They wanted an outlawish type person, right? 
Well, then y'all seen it. That all changed. It wasn't no more Let the Moon Shine. It wasn't no more Outlaw. It wasn't. It was still good songs, but it wasn't the original guy because they got scared. Why do you think that and this goes on? I hate going back to this because I'm at a point in my career where I don't really care what the fuck Luke Combs is doing. <laughs> but if you go back, you'll see that they changed his whole entire image, which is why they told me to take his name off and yada, 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 the rebel flag, all the way up till recently when this motherfucker, they didn't even tell me, they didn't even give me no warning, no nothing. They wanted me to get canceled, is what it was. And it didn't work. The backlash actually came on them, and I got more praise for it. And if you don't believe me, go look at my apology, my apology video. Look at the like to dislike ratio. Numbers don't lie. So, what it is, is they wanted to outlaw with him, and then they changed their mind. Then they got Morgan Wallen, because they wanted to outlaw again. They wanted to try it again. And that backfired on them. They don't want a fucking outlaw, bro. They want a fake outlaw. I'm not calling... Now, I am, I am calling Luke Combs a fake outlaw, but I'm not calling Morgan Wallen a fake outlaw. But they wanted something with Morgan, and they got it, and they changed their mind because they're fucking sissies. Stars are made from walking in the trenches, and it seems y'all are forgetting. Rap's about to fucking come up. Where the fuck your asses come from? What you had to conquer transferred over into a bunch of small words for a big impact on people, cause that's your position as leader. Yeah, I'm white and country spit tobacco like a gunslinger. It's going back to being exactly who in the fuck you say you are. You can't get out here and be this big fucking image and then turn around and be like, oh, I'm sorry, never mind. I'm sorry for. For the rebel flag. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. One, that's just fucking, to me, it's just dumb. It makes you look like a liar, like I've said in the past segments of this song. But it just makes you look weak and it just makes you look like you ain't got no balls. It makes it seem like you got, you know, little, little turtle shell nuts. <laughs> like you're. Like you're scared. Like, dude, if I was on a record label, bro, if they told me I had to do something, I'd tell them to kiss my fucking white honky ass, dude. I don't fucking care. Fuck them people. What are you gonna do? Sue me for the money that you're fucking getting anyway? Fuck you, dude. Fuck you, cracker. I don't give a shit. But that's the thing. And and you're seeing it now, even with rap music, like even rap and hip hop fans, with some of the shit that I put out that's rap, they're like, yo, this is fucking real rap. And this, and listen, it's okay. It comes from all walks of life, but this is coming from motherfuckers who live in New York, motherfuckers who live in Chicago, motherfuckers who live in Texas, places where, where hip hop heads from these places, it matters what they say. Because these places are significant roots of hip hop, real old school hip hop, and if they're giving me the comments that I got on my rap songs, that's like, that's a compliment, man. And that people's forgetting it, dude. Like, if you ask me, I think the motherfucker singing the song should be living the same song he's singing. And that ain't the case no more. These motherfuckers are being made up like Barbie dolls on a shelf at Walmart. And everybody knows it. Yeah, I'll put you through the ringer. Don't ever shit talk my people or preacher will shoot and not think twice about the bullets leaving. Because I don't fucking need a strategy. If I come to you, I'm already a secluded person. But if I say something about you, I know it's true. And I know you ain't got no rebuttal. And I know if you do got a rebuttal, I already know what your rebuttal's going to be. And I already know what my rebuttal's going to be to that. Which is going to be the execution rebuttal to whatever the fuck you're saying. I mind my own business until I, I need to not mind my own business. And when I'm not minding my own business... Motherfucker, you, your tongue better be made of fucking 24 karat gold because if I'm coming for you, I'm coming correct. And if I'm coming correct, your ass is in trouble. So don't ever shit talk me or anybody I'm affiliated with because if you do, well, you're gonna have a very fucking hard time. And I like giving people hard times. Because when I give people hard times, they fucking deserve it. I'm out. Mud to gold behind the lyrics. See y'all in the next episode, baby! Things you didn't know.
know about the Mud to Gold music video. Well, I'll tell you this, motherfucker, it was freezing balls that day. <laughs> Yo, that water was so cold, bro, my Audi turned into an Innie, if you know what I'm saying. It was that fucking cold. Bro, I went to go change clothes and I was like, yo, I got a baby dick, bro. It was cold as fuck outside. It was like in the 40s. And I had to sit in water for like, fuck, I don't know how long. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Like, it was fucking bad. And I drove home like that. Not to mention, check this out. The video, <coughs> it looks like it's in this nice little staged forest place with all this beautiful moss. You wanna know some crazy shit? That was in the front yard of a fucking junky ass rundown house that I fucking bought to renovate. I just was high one day and I was like, yo, look at this front yard. This shit look majestic as fuck. It's got trees like a meadow. I feel like Disney characters is fit to pop out and be like, hello, it's a beautiful day outside. And I was like, we gotta put a tub right here, bro. I don't know why, I just wanted to put a tub right there and paint my face gold and be like, Muddy gold, bitches. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, was there any meaning behind the tub? Uh, in a sense, yeah. What was it? Uh, <laughs> you put me on the spot. Um, pretty much like <coughs> the significance behind the tub was supposed to be like where it was placed at. It was placed in the middle of the woods, which is where I'm from. And when you take a bath, you, you wash off the dirt. And if you look on my first album of Cheatham County, my face is covered in mud. And Cheatham County is where I was raised, which is what I'm talking about in the middle of the woods in Cheatham County, that's where I'm from. So being in the tub signifies, you know, washing yourself off from what you are and then underneath it being, for me, being gold now. And ironically, I have a gold record now. and. You know, I legit have turned the mud into gold. So that was the significance behind the tub. Plus it was a pretty badass tub, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Do me a favor and get in the comments on one of these pussy ass fake country rappers tell them I said shut the fuck up. All right, I love y'all, bye.